Hi everybody and welcome to a new video in the PyTorch for audio and music processing series. In this video we're gonna see how we can make inferences with the sound classifier that we trained in the previous video. As for inferences, this is not the first time that we're gonna uh, be making inferences with PyTorch. In this series, in video number three, we already saw how we can make inferences. In that case, it was for a classifier trained on the MNIST dataset. So what I'm gonna do is just open that script that you can find here in the code base. So under folder number three, and then you go to inference and you have the script. So I'm just gonna copy paste this in the new file here. The reason being uh, because we are gonna be reusing many of the things that we've implemented here. So what we're gonna be doing actually is just readapting this script to the new needs that we have, namely uh, having inferences with our new sound classifier. Okay, so let's get started by uh, importing some things. First of all, here you can see that we are importing from train, feed forward net and download MNIST datasets. Of course, we don't need uh, either of these things for the time being. So I'm gonna just like drop them. What we actually need to import is the CNN network uh, class. So and I'm gonna import it from CNN. I'm gonna import CNN network. Okay, for the time being, let's leave this import uh, like this. And we're gonna need to import stuff from train, but uh, let's just import them when we need to do it. Okay, so uh, first thing, here we have the, the class mappings. So as I said, in the previous script, we were, uh, dealing with the MNIST datasets, and these were just uh, digits. So the mapping was, of course, uh, from a, a specific index in this a list to a specific digit, which happened to, the two things happened to con coincide, obviously. So index zero, digit zero, index one, digit one. But in this case, we need to have another mapping that reflects the uh, sounds that we have in the di 10 different classes. We can take a look at the different classes or sounds that we have in the data set directly uh, checking out the Urban Sound Dataset website. And here you have the uh, mapping. So rather than uh, copy pasting this one by one, I already created this list. So I'm just gonna quickly copy paste them in here. Okay, so that's the first uh, step. Now this predict function is going to be completely unchanged. So if you want to know more about how we actually make these predictions, just go back to video number three. And I think I'm going to leave it to you, leave the video up here for you to check out. Okay. So now onto the interesting part, which is the, the, the actual script. Okay. So here, uh, we have a first, uh, part of this script, which consists of loading back the model. Of course, we were loading this feed forward net, which was trained on MNIST, but now we need to load the CNN network. So I'm gonna change this a feed forward net for, uh, yeah, I'm gonna name it CNN, and I'm gonna do a replace all. Okay, so here, instead of instantiating this feed forward net, of course, we need to instantiate CNN network, and then, uh, we are gonna load back this state uh, dictionary, but of course we're not gonna load it from feedforwardnet.pth, but rather cnnnet.pth. And so this is a file that contains all the weights and information about the uh, trained model. And I'm storing it here directly in folder number 10 for this video. And I'm gonna also upload this to GitHub so that you can make inferences without the need of training uh, the model yourself. Okay, so here we have the state dictionary. Next thing is to load the state uh, dictionary directly into our uh, CNN model. Great, so now we have our model loaded back. The next step is that of loading the urban sound dataset. So here we're gonna drop all of this stuff for the time being. And so we'll say that we want to load the urban 
sound data set. To load urban sound data set, we can reuse some code that we had in train.py. And it's this part here where, uh, first of all, we instantiate a MEL spectrogram uh, transform, and then we pass it to the urban sound uh, data set class. And of course, we, we built this custom da PyTorch dataset a few videos ago. So if you want to check out uh, Urban Sound dataset and how uh, we implemented it, I'm going to leave you like the uh, one video for that. Okay, so let me copy this code and paste it in here. Of course, there's a lot of things that needs to be imported here. So first of all, for this transform, uh, we need to, for the mouse spectrogram transform, we need to import Torch Audio. So I'll do uh, an import Torch Audio. Then there's a bunch of different stuff. So first of all, let's import uh, Urban Sound dataset and we can imports from urban sound dataset will import the urban sound dataset class and then we have a bunch of constants that we need to import so sample rate annotations file audio dear and num samples so let's import all of these constants from train so from train we'll import audio dear annotation file sample rate and num samples and i believe that's it yeah that's correct now we also have to pass the device i'm not interested really in running inference inference on uh, gpu so what i'll do is just hard code cpu so that will uh, yeah, just load the, this data set on CPU. Okay, so now we have the urban sound uh, data set uh, loaded. And what we can do is getting, or what we should do is getting a sample, not from the validation data set, but rather from the urban sound, urban sound data set. And of course, the just needs a space. Okay, so here we have the input and the target. And of course here we can just take USD and paste it instead of uh, validation data, same thing here. So what we've done here is basically just getting the first sample uh, in the data set and we get both the input and the relative uh, expected output or target. Okay, cool. But this is a TensorFlow that has three dimensions. The first dimension is the number of channels. Uh, the second dimension is the uh, frequency axis and the third dimension is the um, time axis. But it turns out that our PyTorch model, our CNN network, expects four dimensions. And the fourth dimension being the batch size at the beginning of this. So what should we do? Well, we need to insert an extra dimension in this three-dimensional uh, input uh, tensor. And we can do that using a method that uh, a, can be applied to a tensor, to a PyTorch tensor, and that's called unsqueeze. So we'll do input dot on squeeze underscore and this underscore uh, allows us to uh, squeeze uh, to, to just put in this extra dimension in place directly with this uh, input tensor and then we need to pass a value here and I'm gonna pass zero and this is the uh, Basically, it's the index where we want to introduce this new dimension. And the dimension that will be introduced will have size 1. Okay, so now input is ready. So we have, I think, everything in place, really. Because at this point, uh, we can make an inference. So we're going to get the uh, predicted value as well as the uh, expected uh, value. And using this predict function that we 
are implemented here. Well, not really in this uh, video, but in the previous video, in video number three of this series. Okay, so now let's run this and see if, if it works. So I'm gonna run it, let's see. Yes, it seems to be working fine. So we are printing the results and so the predicted uh, result is dog bark. So this is the, the sound of the, the sample number one that we have in the urban sound data set. And then the expected um, class is actually dog bark. So it seems like that the uh, sound classifier is doing, uh, at least in this instance, has done uh, a pretty good job. Okay. So this is really it for this video. And as you might remember, this is the last video in the series. So by now you should have a, a very good understanding of different things re regarding PyTorch. So uh, data sets, data loaders, custom data sets, and then also about Torch audio. So all of its transforms, for example, melt spectrograms or other stuff like that. And then you also know how you can create a sound classifier using PyTorch. So I hope you really enjoyed this series. I had a lot of fun really uh, working on this. And I guess that's it for today. If you like this, please remember to share it uh, with your uh, friends, colleagues, because this is going to definitely be helpful for the community as well as for the Sound of AI channel and its growth. Uh, cool. So that's it for today. I'm going to see you in a future series. Take care for now.